behavior driven development um, is what I'd like to talk about. Um, we ha I've done videos for you about um, solid principles. I've done videos for you about test driven development. I'd like to talk to you about behavior driven development. So uh, you've seen with test driven development that effectively you're writing unit tests um, and you're right, but the, the key difference with test driven development versus just normally writing unit tests is you write the tests first and you write the tests to drive the design of the code. So you write a failing test first, you write the code to pass the test, then you uh, demonstrate that, that the uh, test passes. And thus your kind of your, your tests drive the, uh, the code, code development. Behavior driven development takes that stage further um, it looks to um, raise those th that, that kind of specification building out of um, unit tests and into what are known as feature files, uh, where you write features and scenarios. Um, and those features and scenario files look a little bit more like plain English. So it means that they can be, they don't necessarily need to be written by a developer. Um, <clears throat> and there's something that perhaps when you're writing them, you can describe um, behaviours of the software that you want to see. Um, so it's just those sort of like high level descriptions. Um, you can use behaviour driven developments to uh, drive a web runner and um, therefore do functional testing with it. Um, so you can do entire kind of, you know, your, you can run your Selenium tests through it, you can run, uh, yeah, kind of just coded web runner tests, uh, but you can also use it to um, run your unit tests. So effectively you run your scenarios and within there you run your unit tests. And that's what I'm gonna show you today. Um, I'm gonna demonstrate using Visual Studio, um, a BDD tool called SpecFlow um, and NUnit as my unit test framework. So I'm going to bring those three things together, Visual Studio, SpecFlow and NUnit, and we're going to use that to um, drive out code through the definition of features and scenarios. And I think you're going to like this. So first thing we need to do is install a couple of packages. So I go down to my extensions and updates, go to my online section, I'm going to find SpecFlow. <clears throat> I'm going to download that. I'm going to install it. It's going to open up a Get Started page, which I don't need at the moment. And I'm going to install NUnit. I'm going to spell it correctly. And it's the three that I think I need. So I'm going to install that. So now I've installed two things. I need to restart. Uh, Visual Studio, so just going to do that, and back it comes. Uh, I think it's going to open up my last solution, which is the uh, previous test of doing this. This is about, about this is only about the third or fourth time I've tried to make this video, um, so it's all very exciting. We enjoy making the video over and over again because I keep messing it up. Um, so let's create a new project. And I also want to demonstrate here that you don't need to, that you, that, what, because obviously in, 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 the, in our projects, I, you know, we're seeing all the business logic in front end, controllers, web service interfaces, all that kind of uh, stuff. And it shouldn't be there. It shouldn't be in controllers, shouldn't be in views, shouldn't be in web service interfaces. Your business logic should be in model files and your model files, they're just classes. They don't need any other MVC nonsense or WCF nonsense, they're just class files. So I'm going to demonstrate that by building up a class library. So there's going to be no MVC, no um, uh, WCF, none of that nonsense. Uh, so we call that SCA uh, NDD3 because we've already got plenty of other ones. <clears throat> so I've got my NDD3 project there. Um, so I'm going to go to the package manager console. And I'm now going to install two uh, 
packages. I'm going to install specflow and I'm going to install specflow end unit. So uh, if I go install package specflow, we have that. And I'll install specflow dot end unit or even end unit in unit. So now we have that as well. So we've got two packages installed there. I'm going to delete that class file because we don't need that. So that's going to be gone. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go here and I'm going to add the kind of the the the, the sort of starting point of our BDD work, which is um, a uh, feature file. So I'm going to go add new item, and we now see we've got all our specflow stuff. So specflow feature file, add that. Um, I should have uh, renamed the file, but I didn't. So we're going to do that um, straight away now. Uh, let's rename that and we'll call that um, NDD. Um, and as we can see, so it's given me some kind of just some dummy content in here. Two things, it's going to be a feature definition. This is just a very high level kind of uh, bit of text for reading by um, uh, by human beings, it's not it's not going to be processed or anything. And then we've got a scenario definition here, and it's th this is the really clever stuff. Um, the fact that we can have scenarios and the fact that this this code here that will be processed. Um, but I'm going to call this feature NDD calculator, um, and I'm going to describe that and say. Um, uh, uh, if I have a patient, uh, so no, let me move this. So, what, 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 did the, what did the original text say? In order, not to, okay, in order, in order, in order, blah, blah, blah. NDD calculator. In order to send. Order, orders, come orders, orders at the right time. I want to calculate the next delivery date for a patient. So I'm going to tag that NDD uh, because whatever. Um, probably better ways of tagging it, but I'll call it just tag NDD for the moment. Um, and now I'm going to start writing scenarios. My first scenario is, is, is based on, so this is this is going to be driven out by my understanding of the requirements for the NDD. So I kind of created this stuff on Confluence to talk, to go through, you know, understanding of the, uh, how we should be calculating the NDD. And what I can say is that the most basic requirement of the NDD is that if um, the patient status is stopped or removed, then the patient NDD should be null. Um, they don't have a next delivery date if they're stopped or removed. If they're active, all complicated stuff goes on, but if they're stopped or removed, it's null. So we can, um, we can do that. And I'm gonna do that in just a few moments.